thank you guys for for joining. I can certainly kick it off here, um, give a little bit of context and background about myself, and then would love to hear from Haifa as well. So you have two of the creator team um, food quirkers, if you will, joining us today. So uh, my name is Monica O'Neill. I'm the creator head creator, head creator of yeah. Food Quirk. I always mess that up. You'd think I got it by now. Um, and so, yes, we are part of a great team here at Food Quirk. And um, my kind of role and responsibility is to create recipes, which is not a, not a bad gig, you know, create new recipes, collaborate with other like-minded creators. And we can talk about where you guys placed um, on the quiz for Food Quirk, but, but uh, from the creator side of the house, which is what we are, we are open to everything. We eat everything. We're open to new ingredients. The, the funkier the ingredient, the better, the more exciting it is to us. We're always looking to challenge ourselves. At least I am. I know Haifa even more than me. Um, but yeah, today, <laughs> today we are cooking risotto, a Parmesan risotto, and we are also going to be cooking scallops, which is super exciting. So we're going to teach you guys, and you may know this already, but we can collaborate, teach you how to make risotto, and then also how to clean scallops, and also prepare them appropriately. So I'm going to be doing the oh, risotto I, of the house, and Haifa is going to be- froze there scallops. for me. Hopefully I'm, am I back? Am I back? Who's everyone? Is it just, oh, there you go. You're there back. we go. Am I, am I back? Yes. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. That's, the, that's what happens in, uh, in, in remote settings. You got to love it. So thank you guys for joining us. I will turn it over to Haifa to give a little bit of background about herself, and then we'll get rolling on the risotto. Perfect. Thank you, Monica. Um, yeah. So as Monica said, I am also part of uh, Food Quirk. I'm an ambassador for the creator team. Um, and exactly like she said, um, we eat everything, we like to create, we like to experiment. Um, and uh, being a science background, I think Monica is as well. Uh, we like to do a lot of experimenting in the kitchen. So um, really connecting with like-minded folks and learning their techniques. And I just got started because I wanted to get better in the kitchen. You know, I just, uh, the main thing I say is what drove me to it is the drive home from work. The one hour would be spent stressing over what will I cook when I get home? And um, I don't have to worry about it anymore because I just got in the kitchen and started experimenting and putting things together. And it just, you know, by doing it, it taught me how to put flavors together. And so I don't worry what's in my pantry now. I can, you know, whip something up um, in a short amount of time for, for the family. So, um, but I'm happy to be here. I'll be demoing um, scallops, uh, just pan searing some scallops, which, you know, um, is not, it, it can be intimidating, but it really isn't um, so difficult. And uh, once you perfect it, you're gonna want to eat scallops every day, so. <laughs> Looking forward to this. Thanks for joining us. That's awesome. Thank you guys. So, uh, and thanks Haifa for that. Um, I got started right away over here because I wanted to, to get the onions going. So some of our key ingredients that we have for risotto are of course, our boreal rice. So this is a starchy rice. It's a short grain rice and it produces that nice kind of silky starchy flavor, which is exactly what you want for risotto. The other two ingredients that we have offhand, I love garlic. So we're gonna be using a lot of garlic. This is about six, clo <laughs> six cloves of garlic, uh, just minced. I like to mince my own. And then we also have, I already kind of put it in here, but we have about um, one medium sized yellow onion that's also minced. So all I'm doing right now, I, can kinda, I hate to tilt this down here, but you can see, all I'm gonna do is sweat the onions. And you always wanna put your onions in first before the garlic because you don't wanna burn the garlic. That's the number one thing. I, I don't wanna call it a mistake, but I think people do that. They put everything in at once and either you have really raw garlic or you have really burnt garlic. So we like to do it where you're just sweating the onions and you're gonna sweat that for about five minutes or so until they become translucent. And once they're translucent, you can go ahead about halfway there, I'd say. Uh, about, so let's say five minutes in, you're gonna be adding your garlic and you're just gonna sweat the garlic a little bit as well. So we're gonna do that. So Monica, how, how, how do you mince your garlic? The old fashioned 
way on the cutting board with a chopping knife or you want you have one of those uh utensils or tools to do it I, you know i'm not that fancy high five I'm really not i, I wish <laughs> I, I should be but like i know i ha we all have the gadgets but not for chopping i just do it i i do the old-fashioned i don't know how you guys do it smash it with your hand mince it and just continue yeah. chopping until until it's minced so um nothing i wish i had like a cool answer yep. for that i really don't no, that's Here we good. Go, I, I, this is it. We're gonna throw the garlic. There you go. I'll show you my gadget yeah. while you're doing that. Oh, that was my question. What do you use? Yeah, but you're well, not the gadget queen. I have, I have the gadget queen. Guys, I have so. a fancy gadget. However, um, I really oh yeah don't like to use it too much. It's one of these. So the garlic goes in this little pocket, yeah. and then you just crush it. But it makes such a mess, and I waste so much garlic doing this that I just end up using the cutting board. So, you know what I use something like that for too? Um, when I'm making like Asian dishes, you guys, I'll use I'll, I'll put like a, a piece of ginger or some ginger in there just to get like a little. I'll squeeze it, and get a little essence of ginger. Oh yeah, or you can do it on a microplane. You can just do tall. a regular microplane and kind of. I see Sandra nodding. That's right. Grate it yes. over a microplane right. if you want smaller pieces, right? So that's okay too. Yeah. There's, there is no wrong answer. This is what's great about the creator team. There's no wrong answer at, at all. So as long as there's a lot of garlic. Well, yeah. I mean, people are like, what's your favorite <laughs> perfume and smell? I'm like that would be garlic. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't funny. like garlic, then you probably shouldn't be friends. Um, yeah, be friends so with me. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna show you what I have going on here. Come on down, come on down. So. Okay, Let's see a little bit here. Okay, so we have both the garlic and the onion sweating. All right, so they look great. What we're gonna do next is, okay. We're gonna take the arborio rice. I'd say a cup and a half or so, depends upon how many people you wanna feed. Please don't mind me, I eyeball it. This is another creator trait. This is just what we do. We just, yeah, just eyeball it, throw it in. And the key with, rice the arborio rice is you really want to have it on a higher temp you can again salt and pepper as you go because that you want to flavor as you as you work you want to flavor every layer that's my belief and so the goal here now is to simply toast the rice so you're almost starting the cooking process early because you're moving it along because you're going to be toasting the rice so it's not going to take as long if you're adding all the broth my refrigerator is yelling at me. I'm sorry. So we're just going to be toasting this rice. Bring it down here again. There we go. So we're going to continue. And risotto is one of those things where one of those dishes where you want it requires a lot of love, right? So like you're always stirring it. You're giving it a lot of love. It takes a lot. It, it doesn't take a long time. It takes about 20 minutes in total, but. You, you just want to constantly pay attention to it. So it's one of those things you put Frank Sinatra on in the background, you grab a glass of wine, you kind of hang out with it. This is what you do, right? And you can see like the rice is starting to come along where the interior of the rice is a little bit still, it's still white, but the outside a little bit more op opaque. And that's what you kind of start to see. As you can also see here, I have my stock ready and let's talk about this now. So you want to have a good stock, uh, chicken stock, obviously with risotto we think of white wine okay but i'm also going to make this for my daughter tonight so we're going to kind of omit the white wine so bear with me but um you can alternate between chicken stock and white wine so um or any stock you want you can do seafood stock which is also great if you're making a seafood dish like risotto i just happen to have chicken stock on hand but i also do use seafood stock as well so once this gets then do you have the stock heated up do you You're right, hi yes. Or, see, this is this is why she's not here. You see, she for, I forget things <laughs> and she tells me. And, that, and I love this. That's what I need, Haifa. I need you in my life for this reason. Okay. Uh, so, well, you know, it's a recent trick I learned, so I'm happy about it. Yeah. So you definitely want to have it, you definitely want to have the, the broth warm. That's absolutely true. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start pouring in the broth. It's gonna give you a free facial here. Free garlic and rice facial, love it. Okay, and all I you want to do.
Can you guys see it okay? Yep. Great. Okay. You're going to keep it on a medium high heat and you only want to cover the risotto with enough broth to cover the very top of it. You don't want to like blow it out and throw in the whole pot of, of, you know, broth because that's not going to do you any good. And you're going to let this just simmer and you're going to continue stirring it until it absorbs all of this broth. Once it absorbs all this broth, same thing. You're just going to go back and you're going to do it again. And you're going to fill it up once again until uh, it absorbs it, all the liquid. So anytime it's, it's just, it's, it's a process that's on repeat. And this is why I think it's actually so easy. I think people are so scared of risotto. It's like, but it's really not that difficult. It's just, you get the process down and you have it on repeat, right? So I'm going to get this, um, I'm going to get this kind of cooking and let it yeah, sit for a second. Okay. And what we can do now, Haifa too, is I can talk a little bit about the scallops and then we can kind of like tag team with the scallop side of the house if you want, because perfect. You, yes. you don't want to watch me talk and cook risotto for 20 minutes. I'm going to bore you to death. Nobody wants to oh, see. Oh, I'm loving it. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Nobody wants to see me blabbing for 20 minutes. Okay. No, so, not, not at boring me. That's not what I'm <laughs> Oh, good. That's good. So, okay. Let's talk about scallops. So I am from the Boston area. So therefore we have scallops. They are local to us. Um, and the biggest thing, really quick tip is you always, if you buy them frozen, that's what, that's great. You can defrost them, but in the refrigerator, technically you don't want to put them on the counter and have them defrosting because they're going to get warm. You really just want to do a slow defrost for the entire day in the refrigerator. And by the time you come back to them in the evening, they're gonna be ready. So obviously this is what a scallop looks like. You guys all know this, nothing new. There's a little muscle here. People forget to take this off all the time. Just a friendly reminder, you wanna take off, pull off this muscle, okay? And you're just gonna simply do a quick rinse under cold water, that's it. This is what it should look like. And you have to pat it dry because if you don't pat it dry, Otherwise, it's not going to really stick to the pan and get that hard sear on it that we want, that caramelized sear. And you want that nice brown texture. So you really want to make sure that you pull this off. We're going to rinse it. And I got my towel here. We're just going to, you can put it on a towel on a plate. You're going to really pat it nice and dry there. If you want to season it after this, that's great. You can season it with a little salt and pepper because this is super lean, as you know, doesn't have much flavor to it. That's the beauty of it. You can add whatever flavor you'd like. Have you ever- Once your, once your scallops are ready. There you go. Yes. Have you ever defrosted them in milk? No, have you? Ever heard of that? Yeah. Frozen oh. food, yeah. It helps oh, keep wow. it fresher. Wow, so how yes. so? Meaning like put the actual food in the milk, like put the actual product in the milk? Oh, no yep. kidding. I have not heard that. What other That's foods do you do that with besides seafood, David? Do you do like? Uh, uh, no, just just with seafood. Only seafood. Okay, just making sure. I'm like, I've not heard this trick. Okay, I love it. I think that's great. Um, so I've never now, tried that either. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's yeah. Enough. So Haifa's gonna. We're gonna jump into now while my risotto's cooking here. Um, Haifa's just gonna talk about what to do with these beautiful scallops. They're they're patted dry. They're ready to go. Yeah, so I actually had mine on a plate in um, between a couple of towels and I had them in the fridge. So that way I don't have to, uh, if you think about this early enough, then, you know, you can do that. Um, most of the time I forget and I'm frantically patting with, um, patting it dry with some paper towels, but this does a good job because it just dries them up and um, I just season it with salt. And then what I do is, and I'll show you guys in a bit, but, and then get the pan hot. Um, you can do it in a cast iron skillet or you could do it in a stainless steel. Um, and I typically use uh, um, a vegetable oil um, of some sort because it has a 
high smoke point. So, um, you know, uh, I avoid olive oil. It has a lower smoke point. Um, if you use canola, uh, um, some sort of other vegetable oil, grapeseed oil. Um, I have avocado oil today, so I'm just using that. Um, and then you get the pan really hot, get the oil really hot, just so it's at its smoke point. And then that's when you're gonna add um, the scallops and that, that helps it get that nice crust on the outside and then it'll still remain um, you know, juicy and tender, that sweet interior. So um, how long? Do you how, how's the risotto coming? Oh, it's looking great. Said? I said, I'm curious to see how long you cook it on each side because people are, I think yeah, people, so it gets rubbery, right? So that's it does, it does, if you overcook it, that's right. Um, and really, you know, with any seafood, but, um, and I, and I, that's a trial and error, um, kind of thing for me. Cause I always used to be scared that my, I don't want to undercook my seafood even though I ate sushi all the time, but I was just scared at home making seafood that I'm just, you know, I'm going to undercook it. Um, so I always ended up overcooking it. And then slowly I gained enough confidence to cut back on time and cut back on time. And finally, um, for the scallops, I've done anywhere from one to two minutes on each side. Um, and you don't need any more time, um, closer to one minute, I would say. Um, if you get your pan hot enough, you'll get that sear going on it. And that's, Sometimes people overcook it because they want more of a sear. Um, so that trick to that is just get the pan hot um, beforehand, which I, I will that. do now. I love that information because it's so that's so accurate. Like you hit every, I feel like you hit every point. And you know, even you get at a restaurant, people are like, "Wow, a scallop!" I'm like I know, do, you do this. At, like I swear, if you get the confidence after a few tries, you can do it at home. It's not so exactly, scary. exactly. It just takes some, um, and you know, actually getting in the kitchen and doing it, and and not being scared of making the mistakes. Also, you mentioned avocado oil. I love sometimes if I'm doing like a sweeter dish, I'll use coconut oil for the same purpose because it has a really high smoke point, like you talked about. And then I, oh, like, I also feel like grapeseed oil is not like talked about very much, but I love grapeseed oil. Mm -hmm. It's super neutral. I don't know if you guys like Sandra or David, mm -hmm. if you guys use other, uh, have you, if you've tried grapeseed oil, but that's another one that's just like, you can't taste it. You don't know what's there, but it's, you can sear the heck out of things on that oil. It's great. It's, it's a go-to for me because oh, of the is. high yeah. smoke point and uh, the neutral flavor. That's right. Bingo. Oh, that's great to know. I'm going to have to try that next. I, I Typically, it's olive oil or um, um, avocado oil for me, but I haven't tried the grapeseed yet. I taught you something. I'm, I'm blown away right now. Okay. Yes. Oh, you're always teaching. <laughs> so um, while Hype is doing that, I, I'm just adding some additional broth now to the risotto. So I just wanted to update you on that. Nothing crazy going on. And now I can't wait to see Haifa cook those beautiful scallops. That'd be great. Yes. I will wait for my oil to get up to 10. Um, and so you mentioned tw about 20 minutes is what it takes you to make the risotto, correct? I think so. Yeah. I'd say it's about yeah. 20 minutes, like start to finish. Yeah. Well, because, you know, what I mentioned earlier about being a busy mom, a working mom, and then, you know, coming home and having to make food and trying to do it in 30 minutes so that, um, you know, the kids turn into little monsters after, you know, the 30 minutes is their max time. you got to get the food on the plate um, after that. So this would be a perfect dish um, for something like that. You know, um, uh, seafood cooks in minutes and then you make your risotto and flavor it however you want. And actually I was gonna mention, typically I just do salt on the scallops, but I've seen versions with all sorts of like twists, even like ethnic foods, uh, like sumac seasoning on scallops and then making like some sort of a, a saffron risotto to go with it. Um, so yeah, you can do all sorts of experiments with it. Well, that sounds amazing actually. All right. So look at the pan. So you want the pan, like talk to, talk about the pan. How do you know it's ready? How do you know it's hot? All right, let me get it closer. Okay. So you're going to kind of see it glistening uh, when the oil starts glistening and you almost see like uh, um, it's almost smoking. Um, that's when you know it's ready. So I'm just kind of getting it to that point. Um, cast iron is good because this will just retain the heat um, for a long time. 
-hmm. And when you put, you know, a cold seafood in there or whatever, it's not going to lose the heat as fast as say a nonstick would uh, lose. So, so I really do like making um, things that require that hard sear on it in cast iron skillets. So it's not quite ready yet, but I'll salt my um, scallops now. Now, do, now, I know we're not talking about steaks, but do you make a steak in a cast iron too? Is that like your go-to? Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we have uh, cast irons in all different sizes. <laughs> Okay, so just lightly salting the scallops here. What and kind of I salt do you really use, Haifa? Not to be like, I know I'm getting um, really specific here. Is it like a well, kosher? I just have, yeah, I just have kosher salt that I nice. keep in, in here. But, um, you know, you could use like the pink Himalayan salt is really popular um, that people like the flavor of that. You could use that. Um, oh. But yeah, kosher salt does the trick. Oh, I have my products right here. Here we go. I just happen to have it here. Great. All right, so mine's starting to smoke now. So I will go ahead and just turn it a little bit lower and add my scallops to it. And then another thing you wanna make sure is you don't overcrowd the pan um, because if you do, then it just kind of starts steaming the food instead of frying it. So make sure you have enough room in the pan there. And you can see right there. And then the trick is not to move the scallops for that one minute. So just looking at my um, wok or quok here on the oven, um, just don't move it. And if it cooks undisturbed, once you flip it, you'll see that hard sear on it. As we're doing that too, I feel like this is a common theme for fish in general because i think people yeah. and, I, and i'm saying people like myself i learned how to make fish like y'all have to learn right and i remember yep. like putting the salmon skin side down and just like coming at it too, too soon and then all of a sudden it fall the skin comes off and it's a giant mess and i'm like okay what am i doing but i think you oh, yeah. hit the nail on the head with seafood you just don't touch it it releases yes. itself right i mean that's the whole point that's right yeah the other thing I've learned with seafood, especially with skin on, yeah, most of the time you'll heat a pan before you sear something. But with seafood, you put it in a cold pan. Yes. And then heat it yeah. up. And it helps with the release. That's a good point. Um, yeah, I, I, I have not, you know what? Maybe I should try that. I don't, I feel like I don't do that enough. I think that's a great tip. That's a really great, especially with salmon. Yeah. You, get, you get that really right. thick skin. You know? So a stainless steel pan with a little bit of oil in the bottom. Yeah. Put the fish in and then bring the heat up. Now, are you a, do you score your fish? Are you a scorer, if you will, or you know? Sometimes. Okay. It depends yeah. on, not so much with the salmon, but with other, yeah. Yeah. I like, I like the look too. Yeah. 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 The look is very nice. Hey, we'll see bass or something like that. Cause it's pretty thick, okay. right? So it's and like, brown, I feel like that and, works. Yep. Love it. See, this okay, is I don't know if anyone was timing, but I'm flipping over the scallops now. They look and beautiful. I will, get, I will get closer to show you this. Up. They look so good. Look at that. You have a nice sear there. It's not sticking at all, at all. Oh yeah, no, no sticking here. I don't want to move it, but what I do typically towards when I, when I flip it, this is just kind of one of those things that's optional. I'll add about a tablespoon of butter, yep. maybe a little bit more. And then that, you don't really need a sauce after that. Um, once you add the butter to it, sorry, that was noisy. Yeah, and then when they're ready to go after, after a minute or so, they're gonna be ready to go. You just take some of that butter and, and scoop the froth over on top of the scallops. And that's your sauce. Um, and it's delicious and it butter gives it a little like a nuttiness almost. Um, yeah. and like a you know, brown butter, or whatever. And then um you get a good contrast with that sweetness of the scallop. Oh, it's really beautiful. I've seen people even do like the same way you'd base a steak, you could put rosemary in there, right? You could do like some thyme. Oh, yes. Yeah, yep. have you tried that? I've actually got some sage um that mm -hmm. I I bought up 
plant to kind of, you know, hopefully it will last through the summer, but um, I've got some sage leaves and those go really good with scallops and some butter. Um, yeah. But I'll, I'll skip it for this, this part. How do you, how do you guys make your scallops? Like what, what version there's, this is what I love about these two dishes they are both so versatile. What, what types of, um, you know, accoutrements, if you will, do you guys use? or with, with, with scallops and some, and some risotto? Have you tried other types of risotto? Like what's your favorite? I love risotto, so. <laughs> and, said, Let me um, just it. Scallops, I prefer them just cleanly like that with a, with a nice side. Yeah, yeah. You know what, uh, what was I gonna say about the scallops front? Um, oh, no, the risotto front. I also, I personally love mushroom risotto. It's not for today, but it's a mushroom risotto. And another, I'll give you a tip on the mushroom risotto and you guys may know this, mm. but um, I, oh, I buy dried porcinis. You can add fresh mushrooms at the end, but you, if you do dried porcinis and you steep them, you can use the juice as part of the broth and it just really enhances in the flavor of the risotto because now you're using the chicken broth or whatever broth you'd like, vegetable broth. And then you have this powerful porcini broth and it's just really amazing. Sorry, hi, hey, I'm like mesmerized for scallops. Look at this, look at her go. We got our risotto still cooking here too. So we're, we're still going. Okay, so I just got some buttery froth that's going to go on top of these. And then I need my plate of risotto. <laughs> All right, here we go. Scallops are ready. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, and one big thing that Haifa did amazingly well is she did not crowd the pan. When people crowd the pan, you end up steaming them. You don't end up getting that nice sear. So good job, right. because I think Depends on how big your pan is, but I feel like five is like a good amount, you know, yes, without, without really steaming the scallops. Does that mean you're waiting on my risotto now? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> send it over, please. I know, send it over. I was gonna make the, I, I have my scallops here. I was gonna make those too at the same time, like just with you at the same time. So I had, I had at the top, maybe I can even start with that. Oh yeah. How do your kids like scallops? Do they eat those? No, my daughter's four, you know, and my son yeah. is one. My son's one. one. Real, oh yeah. He's not. They're not that into it. <laughs> no, I mean, my daughter, like she'll eat lobster because we're from New England. So I try to introduce it early, but um, yeah, she'll yeah. eat lobster and stuff like that once in a while, you know, like she, but then now, now she's kind of, ew, that's yucky. So you know, I don't know. Oh yeah, they go through phases. Yeah. Okay, good. That's, that's helpful to know. Oh yeah, like, they do. I'm like, my, what, did mine, I, what did I do wrong? No, mine are like total foodies now. And I almost feel like, oh my gosh, I wish I never introduced them to seafood because it gets so expensive when we go out to eat because they just want to eat all the fancy <laughs> seafood. You know? So, um, but yeah, they'll, they'll eat sushi and crawfish and lobster. And sushi. Oh my gosh. It's awesome. Yeah. We, yeah. uh, I'm a big fan of like those fried seafood joints, like the real mom and pop ones around here. We go oh, to yeah. Maine. There's oh, one, uh, Bob's, Bob's clam. Pfft. Amazing. You know, we'll go up there. She likes that. That's like, yeah, let's oh, get that's some fried awesome. fish. Oh my gosh. It's so good. It's worth the hour and a half drive. I don't even care. I just I go up there just for those clams and I come home. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, you have the best seafood up there. I have to make a trip. Did we talk about where, you, yeah, we talked about where you guys are from. Okay, so I'm like, I feel like I want to yes. make sure we knew. Okay, good, good, good. Want to make sure we knew I need to, everybody. I need to make a work trip up to up there, Monica. I'll take you, we can go out to dinner. We'll go to like all the cool places that my husband doesn't like to eat at because he's a little more picky than I. Oh, that's I'm going awesome. out with Haifa. She and yes. I are going to go eat. Yeah. <laughs> he's used oh, to that. Oh, I will. Oh, okay. Okay, she's going out to- The flushes, folks. Did a great job. Thank you. I got a scoot. Good to see you so much, David. Good luck. Have fun. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. All right. We have one last step on the risotto. Because it's done. 
Number one thing yeah. is you want to take it off the heat because it's just going to keep on cooking if you don't. So let me show you. Let me move my pan. Moving my pan over here. Taking this off the heat. Okay. What makes risotto so great and creamy is adding butter to it and aerating it. That is the last step. And then we are golden. So big knob or two of butter. Hi, I feel like you and I are not stingy with the butter. I love that. Just <laughs> I'm not. I'm just like, I mean, okay. if it's there, I'll use it. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So we're going to take it off the heat. You can see it's not on the burner anymore. And you're just going to aerate it and add as much quick, like mix, like, just mix it until you add air into the, into the, uh, into the risotto. You're just going to keep on mixing, keep on mixing yeah. it. And that's actually the butter plus the aerating of the risotto is actually what makes that creamy texture. People don't know this. It's like, I didn't know this until I started making it because you think, oh, is there cream in this? Not at all. There is not cream in this just simply because you're aerating it. That's what it is. So there that's you go. an awesome trick. trick. Now, I, I'm definitely going to try that now. I, I haven't been doing that. We're going to add some. That's the last ingredient. This is super easy. You can add some black pepper and things. It's really versatile. Do whatever you'd like. But you can see here. This is even. What I, did I you add, Monica? Touch early. Just some nice pecorino romano. Ah, wonderful. Yum. Now, yes, I, do, I usually get a block of parm and I do it myself. I know. But tonight it was a little bit crazy with kiddos and stuff like that. So, oh, yes. Um, but yes, you see, so you want to aerate it enough. So it kind of like, so you can see it kind of coats the spoon. And right before you serve it, it's actually going to set up just a little bit. And I'm going to plate it for you right now and I will show you. And it's going to look great. And you can add basil. You can add whatever you want to it. Nice creamy risotto. And you want it just a little al dente, but you know, not too, not too much. And this is it. Oh, I thank you. Can you guys see me okay? Hopefully Looks you can. Delicious. Oh, Sandra can see me. Okay, good. There you go. Yeah. That's your that is your risotto. So that's what we got. Do you have any other questions? Any questions? I'm good. I'm going to try. You it. did a great job. Mm -hmm. It's easy, yes. right, Sandra? It's easy, I feel like. Fresh parsley, little fresh basil out of the yard. You got some stuff going. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was just showing. If you were going to do it with white wine, um, would you use all That's wine or part yeah. wine and part stock? Part wine and half and half. Part wine, half, half and half. Part. Yep. So it's like I'll go in and go one, one dollop of wine until I fill it up right until it covers the, the rice. Stir, 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 and then I go in. Next round is going to be chicken stock. Fill it up. Stir, stir, stir. Third round, okay. a little more wine. So just piggyback it, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good question, the scallops look divine. Just they lovely. Look so good. Yeah. Really good. Thank you. I can't wait to eat I have, them all. I have. Um, they look delicious. Mm. I wish I had the That's risotto good. to give you now, because you're just going to eat scallops. I know. Well. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We actually have some mashed potatoes. So I had made those earlier. So we're going to do mashed potatoes and scallops today. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Never a wrong answer. Sorry, I'm cheating. Excellent. I, uh, I think we're having leftovers. <laughs> oh, yum. <laughs> well, you can plan for tomorrow. A sheet pan quesadilla that we made the other day. Oh, so. I love a quesadilla. Who doesn't yeah, love a quesadilla? Oh, that's cool. Chicken. Sheet pan quesadilla it came out really well. Ooh, Yummy. That sounds great. That yeah. sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. I need to do more sheet pan meals. That sounds I good. I feel it like we cool. overcomplicate things. Very what are you cool. going to do with this, this, this? It's like, you don't yeah. know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> well, That's thank you guys okay. for joining. I don't know if you have any other questions, but it was so thank nice you. to have everybody together and, and go over this, this dish. We'll be posting, I think, the recipe on Food Corp. Um, oh, is that where they're posted? I watched one of these yes. the other day and, and they said they would post the recipes, but I couldn't find the recipe. Oh, okay. Do you know which, so, which one you attended? Uh, it was the brunch one. 
the brunch one that would be sweet Lauren. potato waffles hey. and um whatever else they made the sweet potato waffles or something else yeah, yeah. Lauren and Lita. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i'll circle back with the late they're wonderful i'll circle back with them and uh we'll see if okay. we can get that on there but it'll it'll be in the portal like on the food cork website but if it's not oh. there okay i, I will tell we can circle back and ask them okay that sounds great. Thanks right, so much. Guys. I really enjoyed this. I hope you do more of these things. This is fun. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you and so much. I got my wine, so I'm okay, doing Okay, good. That. All, right. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Monica. Bye, Haifa. Bye.